Hello guys, welcome to the AKA Academy channel. I hope that you are doing great over there. Today we are going to talk about mechanisms. We will talk about basic concepts of mechanisms. Also, we will talk about degree of freedom of space. Also, degree of freedom of the mechanisms. And we will talk about what's the difference between the kinematics and dynamics. And just I will teach you some basic things for the mechanisms. So this video will help us to how to solve the problems for the displacement analyze analyzers, velocity analyzers, and acceleration analyzers. So this video I believe that will be really really helpful for the next videos. So let's start it guys. Firstly we should define a mechanisms. What does that mean? A mechanism may be defined as a group of rigid bodies connected to each other by rigid kinematic pairs to transmit force or motion. So this definition is really, really important, guys. We should memorize it. We should, we, we should understand it. So what is the important point, guys? A group of rigid bodies should be connected to each other by rigid kinematic pairs to transmit force or motion. So don't forget it, guys. This definition is really, really important for us. So let's investigate the analysis of mechanisms. <clears throat> we should analyze it as a two parts, guys. One of them is kinematics, other one is dynamics. What is the difference between the kinematics and dynamics, guys? So let's let's think a mechanism. So you can think like this a uh, simple mechanism. So in the kinematic sides, just we care angle of the between these two links or displacement of these two links, but at this moment, just we are thinking at that moment. What will happen in two minutes or in one hour? We don't care this in the kinematic side. We care that in dynamics. So this is the difference, guys, between the kinematics and dynamics. In kinematics, we are just thinking the mo instant moment. Right this moment or right this moment, whatever, but just at this moment. In dynamics, we will think the for forces, we will think the what will happen. Uh, in the angle or what will happen between these toolings for the displacement. But firstly, we should understand the kinematic side to solve the dynamic problems. Don't forget it. So, by the way, I just want to define a rigid body. What does that mean? If any, if any body is not have a changeable body, it means it's a rigid body. So you can think like this. This is A point and this is B point. If this distance is not gonna change in two minutes or in one hour, whatever, it means this body is rigid body. And in this class, I mean in the mechanisms, we will interested with always rigid bodies, also with the rigid kinematic pairs. So rigid word as a word is really, really important for us. All right, also we should define the degree of freedom of mechanism, guys. This side is really, really important for us. Also, I will, I prepared some examples to how to solve, to understand how to solve the problems, how to solve the degree of freedom problems. In the next video, we, you will see it. But first we should understand what does that mean? So guys, degree of freedom of mechanisms is the number of the independent parameters that is required to define the position of every link in a mechanism. So this define definition is really, really important for us. The number of independent parameters 
that is required to define the position of every link, every link in a mechanism. So I, I believe so you understood this, but don't worry about it. You will understand this uh, in with the examples really, really much. So let's keep going guys. We should understand the, how, what's the formula of the degree of freedom of mechanism. So let me write this. Also there's, I wrote down here, you can see F is equal to the lambda times L minus J minus one plus total from one to the J F I. So what is this formula? What is the lambda? What is the L? What is the J? I just wrote down over there. You can see F is the degree of freedom of mechanisms for sure. We are just looking for it, right? So what is the lambda? Lambda is degree of freedom of space. And I just wrote down a note here. Three for two dimensional, six for three dimensional. What does that mean? Let me explain guys. So let's think a two dimensional like this paper, right? What kind of motion can we make in the two dimensional? This is the question. So. For example, this is X axis, this is Y axis, right? So let's think of any body, any rigid body. It can make a motion on the X axis, right? Or it can make a motion on the Y axis. Any, anything else? Yes. And we, our rigid body can make a pure rotational motion in the two dimensional. So totally, we have three kind of motion in two dimensional because of that our lambda is which is which means the degree of freedom of space we are going to use the three for two dimensional and we said six for three dimensional why because guys so we have a like x axis y axis z axis right so our rigid body can make a motion on the x-axis or y-axis or z-axis, right? So these are translational motions. What about the rotational motions? This rigid body can make a rotate with the x-axis or it can rotate with the y-axis or it can rotate with the z-axis, right? So we have totally three translational also three rotational movements so totally we have six motions in the three dimensional because of that lambda is six for the three dimensional don't forget it guys because it depends on the problems if it's asking to you on the three dimensional you should calculate it as a six or if it is a two dimensional you should calculate it as a three. So it is really, really important for us guys. Don't forget it. So let me change my paper. So I guess, I believe so, we understood too, what does that lambda means? I mean, degree of freedom of space. So it times L minus J minus one. What is the L? L is the number of links, including fixed links. What is the J? J is the number of joints. And what is the FI? So this side is, um, can make you confused, but you will understand this side with the examples. But just memorize it. We are going to use the one for the R and P joint. R is the revolute joint, guys. P is the prismatic joint. Also, we are gonna use the two for the gear pairs and we are gonna use the three for the spherical pairs. So guys, this is the formula and we will memorize it. And also I will repeat, I will write down this repeatedly so you can memorize it easily with these questions for the next video. But in this video also, I just want to show you some these examples 
just what are they? What are their names? So, so this is classical five bar mechanisms, guys. You also you will see in the next video. It has a five links, so we call that as a five bar mechanisms. So these symbols are represented the ground. Don't forget it. Also these symbols, I mean like dot for inside is the empty. It means a uh, R joint. These are the revolved joints, guys. Every each one. This rigid body. This represents the sliding motion. I mean, if you will see like this rigid body, it means this rigid body can make a slider, can make a sliding motion on the ground or in the channel like this. There's a channel and this link will make a sliding motion. So this rigid body make will a sliding motion on upwards to the downwards. Also, there's a, another rigid body which is which can be make a sliding motion on this link. So I'm just saying, these symbols, also we have some of these symbols over here, it represents a welded points, welded guys. What does that mean? These are stick to each other. They are, if this is going upwards, this link will go to upwards with this rigid body because they are welded. It cannot be changeable or you know, these are rigid bodies with together. These are stick to each other. Also, this link is stick to this gear. Yes, guys, these are gears. Also, this one is gear. So, in the next video, we will calculate the degree of freedoms of each mechanisms. I just wrote down here four examples. And I guess, I believe so. These examples, these examples will be enough to understand how to solve the degree of, how to find the degree of freedom of the mechanisms. So basically, I will just explain the basic concepts in this video. So just see you in the next video and I will just solve these problems and you will understand how to find the degree of freedom of the mechanism.